Hi everyone, welcome to another Explained in 10 video. Today's video is all about terminal commands. By the end of the video, you'll know 20 to 25 common commands that we think every developer should know. Many people are actually afraid of using the terminal or command line because there's no graphical user interface. So it looks like it's just you and the computer. The terminal assumes that the user knows what they're doing as opposed to the graphical user interface where you can intuitively figure out what to do yourself. But once you get to know some of the commands and get comfortable working in the terminal, you might even start to prefer using the terminal over pointing, clicking, and dragging. So what is a terminal? You might see this referred to as command line, command line interpreter, command prompt, or simply CMD on Windows. It's also called console, terminal emulator, or shell. The broadest definition of a shell is a program that runs other programs, but when you hear shell in the Linux world, they're most likely referring to the command line shell. The terminal provides an interface that allows users to accomplish and automate tasks on a computer without the use of a graphical user interface. Basically, you can use text commands to do things like navigate through a directory, copy a file, and many, many other complex tasks. Let's look at how to open up the terminal. Now, because there are so many differences between the operating systems, the terminal program is actually different for each. For Mac users, the terminal is a program that comes pre-installed. Type terminal into the spotlight tool, or you can go into the applications folder into utilities and open it up that way. Windows comes with CMD, but that actually has its own set of commands that you can use. If you want to try out the commands in this tutorial, you can use PowerShell to run bash commands, which should also come pre-installed on the newer Windows versions. You can also download and use git bash as an alternative. Most Linux distributions supply several, such as GNOME Terminal, Console with a K, Xterm, NXterm, and Eterm. You don't need to download anything. You can just read the help documentation for a distribution to see which one is included and then use that terminal. Once you open up your terminal, you're going to want to know which directory you're in. A directory is just another word for a folder. By default, most terminal emulators open up in your home directory. Whenever you see this tilde symbol, it refers to your home folder. Your terminal might look different than mine. I'm using the iTerm emulator and I have it customized to show just the path. There are several different terminal emulators available. iTerm has additional features like advanced search, autocomplete, and split panes, so I can use different terminal windows side by side. Let's type in the first command that shows you which directory you're in. By default, this command will give you the absolute or full path. The command is pwd, which stands for print working directory. Before going further, let's take a quick look at the Linux file system hierarchy or tree. Root is at the base and everything, all the files and directories are stored in there. Home directory is the most significant here. This is where all your personal data is stored. This again is represented as the tilde symbol on your terminal. To change the folder you are in, you can use the cd command, which stands for change directory, and then enter the directory you want to go to. In this case, let's jump to the root and then back again into home. A dot just means your current folder. Two dots means one folder up, three dots means two folders up, and so on and so forth. You can also jump back with just two dots. You don't need to type cd every time. You can use a relative path or an absolute path. Relative path is just relative to the location you are in. This is an example of an absolute or complete path. Now let's go back to the home folder and navigate to projects. Another important tip here, if you noticed, is autocomplete. After you start typing the command, you can hit tab to autocomplete the word. You can also press tab twice to see a list of options, cycle through them, and then hit enter to select it. You can use the command clear to clear your terminal screen. Two other commands are pushd and popd. So say for example you're working in a folder and you really quickly want to check out some other files in another folder. Instead of cd, you can try pushd which acts exactly like cd but just stores your location in a stack. So when you are at this other location after doing whatever you need to do there, you can enter popd at any point to quickly return back to the folder that you were in. Let's look at another fundamental command, which is ls. This command lists all the files and directories that are present in your location. So these are the files in the personal portfolio directory. Let's check out what's in the root. 
There are certain options you can pass with most commands. For ls, if you pass in hyphen l option, it will list all of your files in the long format, which shows permissions and the date and time of creation. Hyphen a shows your hidden files. You can also type multiple options together, for example, ls hyphen al or ls hyphen la. Here's a general idea of what the structure of any command looks like. You have a command, the options prefixed with a hyphen, and the arguments. You don't have to remember all of these options though, you can just check the manual pages with the man command. It shows you what the command does, the description, and the options that are available. Lowercase a in this case shows you the directory entries whose names begin with a dot. You can press space or arrow keys to cycle through this doc and hit Q to quit. You can also type man man to check the manual for man command. If you just want a quick description, you can use the what is command. For example, what is mkdir? Make directories. To make a directory or folder, you can type in the mkdir command. Let's look at the man pages for all commands we run from now on. So mkdir and then the name of the directory you want to create. Let's make another folder called test in this and ls to see if it was created. To create a file, you can use the touch command. Notice how the files and folders are colored differently in this iterm terminal here. If you want to copy this file to another file, you can use the cp command. You can also enter an absolute path if you wanted. If you want to copy it in the same folder, you can just write the names of the files. Let's look if it got created. To move a file from one location to another, you can type in mv and then the source file and then the target destination. Let's put it in the test folder for now. Another thing to note here is that if you move the file in the same folder but name it something else, this command will actually rename the file. So say we want to rename file2, we'll just type in mv file2 file underscore renamed. To remove a file, you can use the rm command. Be careful with this command though, because once your file is deleted, it's permanently gone, it doesn't go to the trash. Let's remove this file called file underscore renamed. Let's try deleting this folder. So the rm command works on files and not directories. But if you look at the man page, there is a command option hyphen r that you can pass to delete a directory. Now let's just quickly create a bunch of folders, test1, test2, test3, and test4, and maybe a bunch of files in test1. Now if I want to delete all the files in this folder, I can use a wildcard character asterisk. I can also pattern match with this wildcard character. So say I wanted to delete everything in this folder that begins with uh, the letter T. RM space asterisk will get rid of all the files in your current folder. Let's leave a file in here. You should really be careful with RM. I have a friend who once typed in RM hyphen RF. F is the force option on his home folder by mistake and it erased a bunch of things. Thankfully, I think he stopped it in time or I think it stopped because of some permission error. There's just no way to recover these files and it does not go to the trash, it just disappears. So really be careful with this. Also, side note, if you're ever executing something and want to cancel that action and break out of it, you can press Ctrl C. To remove a directory, you can use the command rmdir. Let's try removing test1 which has a file in it. Can't delete because the directory is not empty. You might wonder why does rmdr even exist if you can just remove a directory with rm hyphen r. If you want to clean up a bunch of empty folders in a directory, you can use the rmdir command and it will remove all the empty folders there and that's a really useful tool in that case. Let's see how to edit a file. You probably won't use this all too often, but it's nice to know if you want to edit any config files especially. So you can type in vi or vim to open, up, open the file up in vim. Now Vim has modes and by default you won't be able to type in it. If you want to insert some text, you have to press the I key to enter insert mode. You can type what you want and to exit you can type uh, in escape colon Q. You can also use the nano editor and type what you need and close it using the options at the bottom.
To view a file on the terminal itself, you can use the more or less commands. I'm just going to use this on this Zish RC file here. Space or arrow keys to move about and Q to quit. You can type in history to view the last 10,000 commands. You can also press the up arrow to see the last command you typed and keep pressing it to see further up. Control C to break. You can use the file command to check what type of file it is. Applications is a directory. Zsharc is a text file. Which is a command to locate a program. It shows the path where Python is located in this case. Some other commands and concepts to know would be grep, which is global regular expression, which lets you match a pattern and search for files. sudo uh, is used to use a command as a super user. Redirection and also the pipe symbol lets you pass an input to an output that allows you to do some amazing things. In this case, we've used grep to find a pattern that contains mv, and we're passing history to it to view all history items that include mv. Finally, the last self-explanatory command we'll cover here is exit. Thanks for watching Explained in 10. You can check out some more resources and a cheat sheet for terminal commands in the description below. If you want to know about something specific, do leave us a comment. We'll be posting more videos in this series soon, so you can subscribe to the V3 Academy channel to get notified. Thanks again for watching.